Hey everybody, welcome to another Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan, and today we're going to talk all about uh, common wireless microphone problems you might run into. All right, so today we're going to talk about some common problems with wireless microphones that we hear about. Uh, obviously, wire, wireless microphones are a great option um, for a variety of different applications, everything from school gymnasiums to presentations to churches, uh, conference rooms. Uh, there's always a great application to have a wireless microphone. You know, that way you don't have uh, cable tied to you, a little bit more freedom, um, and can kind of take it where you need to go. Whether you're singing, whether you're speaking, moving around a stage, moving around a church, moving around a gymnasium, um, obviously we all understand that wireless mics are, are great. Uh, but every now and again, you might encounter things like wireless mic dropouts, which can be a real nightmare. So today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into what can cause some of these issues like dropouts that you might experience. So what are some of the common problems you might face with wireless mics? Um, there's a variety of different uh, terms and really in-depth uh, issues that um, I can dive into that uh, can get very complicated, but we're gonna try and take a more um, end user friendly approach here and, and kind of bring this down to earth of what some of the issues can be. Some of these terms include things like multi-path interference, noise floor issues, uh, interference, intermodulation, distortion, um, frequency coordination, um, in, uh, channel incompatibility. These are just a few of the examples of what you might run into. So let's try and kind of clear up what some of these terms mean and how we can get around them to make sure your wireless mic works as well as it needs to. So. Um, one thing we hear sometimes is people referring to feedback with wireless microphones. Feedback is actually whenever uh, a speaker is outputting an audio signal that then is getting picked up by a microphone and then reamplified through the microphone, back out of the speaker, back through the microphone again, uh, creating a feedback loop, uh, kind of like they talked about in third grade science class. Uh, and that happens at a particular frequency. Um, if you've ever been watching TV late at night or early in the morning and you hear that emergency broadcast, whoop, that's uh, what's called a one kilohertz or 1000 hertz test tone. Uh, so that's a frequency. So there's frequencies of feedback. Uh, but feedback is not exactly what we're talking about here. We'll talk about feedback a little bit more in another video. Uh, but what we're referring to here is more of some of the static or um, noises you hear um, that's basically the interruption from your wireless mic back to, the, uh, back to the receiver. So one of those is what sounds a lot like static. Um, one thing that can always cause static, which can sound sometimes like dropouts, um, is when you're using the microphone from too far away. Every wireless mic has limitations of how far it can broadcast from the transmitter back to the receiver. Um, some more professional type models have distances of 50 feet, 100 feet, um, and depending on longer range antennas, many times you can get a couple hundred feet of range. Um, some more cost effective units may only give you 25 feet or 30 feet. Um, so one of the main causes of uh, you know, static or dropouts and things like that is just simply being too far away. One way we can test for that is bring your microphone back closer to the receiver and see if the issue goes away. Another issue is um, a loss of range or local interference. So a wireless mic broadcasts on a particular radio frequency that transmits from the transmitter back to the receiver. Um, the RF landscape, depending on where you are, kind of refers to um, what frequencies are broadcasting inside that space. We may not know it right now, but beyond any of the wireless microphones you see, there are also TV stations that are broadcasting, radio stations, and various other things, um, cell phones and, and whatnot, that can interfere in the RF space with our microphones. So sometimes what we may need to do is if you it seem to be getting a lot of interference on a particular station, you go to your um, diversity receiver as well as your transmitter and actually change the frequency you're broadcasting on uh, at least two megahertz up or down away from um, the local interference. Another issue that can pop up is what's called multipath interference, which is when sound waves travel uh, from the transmitter and combine in all other locations before it reaches back to the antenna. Uh, idea is we want to try and have as clear of line of sight from our transmitter back to our receiver as possible so that uh, we don't have to worry about reflections from glass walls um, or 
a brick that may have excessive rebar in it that doesn't allow the transmission of the um, RF waves through that wall. Uh, we also have to worry about what's called noise floor or noisy wireless. Um, sometimes um, wireless microphones can have a bit of noise from the transmitter back to the receiver because the receiver is having kind of difficulty um, picking up what's uh, actually speech and what's actually the noise itself. So the idea is we want to try and um, cut down on any electronic devices we might have nearby. We want to make sure we don't have um, a mic broadcasting really close to a you know a fan or a um, HVAC uh, system or any electronic devices and we want to make sure that we have the microphone as close to the source as possible. You got a lavalier mic, you want to make sure you have it close, not clipped way down here. You have a wireless handheld, you want to make sure and talk here instead of down here. The idea being that this mic is picking up other things. Um, the other issue that can kind of pop up there is that many times many wireless receivers will have a squelch setting where you can actually kind of set how much noise is going to be allowed through the receiver versus um, you know kind of knocking off some of that noise. The issue may be there is that you turn up squelch too high now you can no longer hear some of the plosives or quieter syllables that are coming through your transmitter um, but many many of the uh, receivers out there have an option to adjust that to try and make your microphone sound as good as possible. Another issue we sometimes come across with multiple wireless systems is called intermodulation. Um, here I have a single wireless receiver for one wireless microphone. As you see, it has two antennas. The idea is if one of these antennas is having difficulty picking up this transmitter, uh, the receiver will switch to the signal from the other receiver. That's good in that it can help prevent um, you know, any interference on any one um, antenna. It, it'll automatically switch to the other to as seamlessly as possible, make sure you can still have your uh, wireless microphone coming through. The issue arrives though if we're doing lots of wireless mic systems in one rack or one space. If we were to have say four of these receivers for four wireless microphone channels in one rack, that's eight antennas. Now if I'm using my handheld and it's broadcasting back to eight antennas, sometimes there can be interference uh, and confusion you know, from this transmitter of how does it get to the appropriate antenna. So the idea is in those kind of situations, we generally want to use antenna distribution or um, which allows us to use just a pair of antennas or a higher gain antenna rather than just using all the individual antennas that come with the unit. Uh, sometimes we also get questions that pertain to incompatibility. Um, this is a single wireless receiver, um, like I mentioned. So that's for good for one wireless microphone channel. If we were to say, buy a body pack and then expect that this body pack plugged in with a lavalier microphone can now work with this receiver, we have to make sure, number one, is it the right brand? Is it the right model? Is it the right frequency? And also, we have to determine which of these we want to use at any given time once they are compatible with this receiver. Um, every receiver is expecting to receive signal from one transmitter, not both. So this can broadcast here or this can broadcast here. Uh, you can have both in the, in the closet in case you may, may not know how the pastor wants to use his mic today or for, to accommodate a variety of different speakers, but you can only use one or the other at a time. So you probably heard me mention a few times now the term RF, which stands for radio frequency, basically broadcasting wirelessly over radio frequencies. Uh, that's just a little bit more technical way to talk about a wireless mic. What's important about the term RF though is that there is an RF spectrum out there that I kind of alluded to earlier. It's important to know your RF spectrum. Um, that basically means uh, there's some uh, sites out there that will allow you to search your zip code and your location to know what's broadcasting through the air in your area. That way we're able to look and see uh, are there lots of TV stations or radio stations possibly interfering with us um, as, as well as what um, do we need to be concerned about as far as some of the broadcast hierarchies out there. Um, basically, TV stations are allowed to transmit stronger signals than conventional wireless microphones. And if you have lots of TV stations in an area, um, a large metropolitan area like a Dallas or Houston or Chicago, uh, it may be challenging to find a number of wireless microphone channels available. We can always help with that, so just make sure and have that information handy if you're needing help with a wireless microphone when consulting us. So now that we've kind of outlined some of the problems, let's take a look at you know, some tips of what we can do to cut down on wireless microphone issues. First, we always want to ensure our antennas are in direct line of sight to the transmitter being used. 
you know, not necessarily um, uh, inside of a locked cabinet or behind a closed closet, behind a wall, things like that. We always want to use high quality components, good high quality microphones. Um, there are some $20 and $30 wireless mics you'll find out there in um, the open marketplace. Not always ideal though as far as the reliability and quality you can expect. We always want to use low loss cabling um, if we're doing like a an, uh, distributed antenna system. Um, we want to make sure and use an anten antenna distribution system when using multiple mic receivers. Uh, we also want to identify and use RF bands away from some of the commercial broadband um, channels. And always use good batteries or use rechargeable batteries whenever possible. So as you can see in front of me, we've got a variety of different wireless microphone systems. This is the RE3 system from ElectroVoice. Um, I also have the Airline 99 system from Samson for more of a fitness type headset. And then this is an Audio-Technica 2000 series body pack uh, to kind of show you just some of the different brands that we carry. If you have any additional issues with your wireless mics that you'd like to address with us or if we can help with finding a new wireless system for you from any of the brands that we carry, definitely feel free to reach out to us at www.proacousticsusa.com. Uh, also feel free to drop us a like or a comment down below. Make sure and hit the subscribe button, let us know you're watching and be updated whenever we come out with new content. And if we can help with anything else, be sure to reach out. Once again, I'm Nathan and we'll see you next time.